Thank the maker. Hello. All right, guys, today we're going to talk about how we can create tension and release in music with my good friend, Jordan. Hello, hello. And there are many and various ways, too many to mention. We're going to be talking about the contrasts that you can use <gasps> in your music to create more of a narrative. That's right, because a song should have a narrative structure. We're telling a story, aren't we? Yeah, that's right, through music, through yes. sounds. One way to produce contrast is to forget what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> if you just looked at the screen, this is an outtake. One way to to create tension and release in your music is through varying volume and you can go from very quiet to ah! very loud very loud in a drum and bass song for example mm. if you're doing an intro kick build up or a kick roll you could have your kicks a little bit sort of quieter than when they're actually in full impact on the drop and this is going to create more of a well, I guess a release on the drop when it gets louder. Yeah, right? yeah, you're going to be building up the tension towards the drop. With the volume. And then a momentary drop in volume. You're into your drop. Oh my goodness. Perfect. The hairs on the back of my nose are standing up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second way to create um, tension and release is by varying the amount of instruments or the amount of layers in a patch. So the basic principle is less instruments or layers is uh, more relaxing. More instruments and a thicker texture or more layers is more tense. Like a drum and bass song again, if we're talking about the build up, you could be using a lot of different layers and a lot of different instruments, you know, like pads, strings, risers, some percussions, everything sort of building up to a crescendo and that's creating tension. And then when we finally come to the drop, we sort of cut everything out and we strip back things to basics and we have just a nice sort of weighty bass and like a simple drum loop and then that is the... The release. Uh, maximum booty shaking. Maximum booty shaking. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've got a lot of layers, Marcel. Oh, like an onion. <laughs> yeah, peel them all away. Oh. That's, my, that's my advice. Peel away my advice. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, but I don't know why. Another way to create contrast and therefore tension and release is to have in your A section or melody a lower pitch. So, lower pitch. And then when you hit your chorus, so you go for a higher pitch yeah. and a more sweeping feel. So another way this could work in a drum and bass song is, let's say you've hit your drop, you've got like a nice low pitch, you've got your low bass, going on to progress from that release that you got on your drop to to st start to reintroduce some tension mm. you know as you go further into the song we can start to increase the pitch on certain things so certain elements of your bass line or your melody you can why are you laughing <laughs> <laughs> just blowing <blind> down <laughs> increase the pitch on some certain elements to reintroduce some extra tension as we come into for example the next verse well explain Marcel <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it. I've only been there for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> rhythmic complexity, rhythmic complexity. So, rhythmic simplicity, <laughs> rhythmic complexity. So, this again goes back to verse and chorus. So, what I like to do is keep the drum loops fairly simple in the verse and then add some rhythmic complexity in the chorus. For example, in a drum and bass loop as well, you could start off with a simple drum loop and then you can add in some top loops or 16th shakers, like a bit faster, and that is going to be introducing that extra tension and keeping things moving. Forward. Forward. Always, always forward. Always be moving forward. I'm like a shark. Can't sit still. What noise is always a shark <laughs> and finally, a dog was seen wearing a sweater in Paddhurst today. And finally, it's possible to move from harmonic simplicity to harmonic complexity. And this could be an idea such as uh, having one chord per bar in your uh, A section, and moving to two chords per bar which ramps up the excitement. Oh, I see, so extra chords and more of a progression, like faster almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah and people, people sense this, you know, they, they may not know what's going on yeah. consciously, but they can feel that, like, things are going. By the way, guys, in case you don't know, Jonathan is my good friend and studio neighbour, and he's helped me oh. on uh, a lot of my <laughs> tunes with my chord, oh. chord progressions and Thank stuff. You. So I sometimes go to him for advice because he's really good at the piano. On our next uh, tutorial together, we're going to teach you some, like, 
more advanced chord progressions you can use. That's right, and how to construct your own chords from yeah. dog's toenails. <laughs> <laughs> or from musical notes, you know, the choice is yours. Up to you. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and we'll be back next time with some chord stuff for you. Peace. <laughs>